Hey, uh, and welcome back. As some of you might know, the new Ikoria Layer of Behemoth just came out on Magic the Gathering Arena. And in lieu of what's been going on, I thought it might be fun to sit here and open some packs. So I saved up some money and got ourselves 18 packs to open up. And we're going to see what's inside it. I have looked at some of the new uh, Mythic Rares for the set uh, with a friend. But um, other than that, I haven't spoiled it. So I'm uh, pretty excited to see what we get. We're going to start opening packs, and hopefully we get some cool stuff in here. Alright. So let's our chaff. Bush meat poacher, sacrifice another creature, you gain life, you go to that creature's toughness, draw a card that's not bad in a nice black sack deck. It's a nice common. Mysterious scorpion dies, deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. Now that's not bad. That'd be really nice in a multiplayer game. I wish Arena allowed for multiplayer. And that's something that maybe we should all get into is messaging uh, Wizards of the Coast about adding multiplayer in here so we can have a 4 player commander game or something. I think that'd be fun. We got uh, Sleeper Dart. Enters the battlefield, draw a card, tap, sacrifice it. Target creature doesn't untap. Okay, so it kind of just locks down a creature for a turn, and you get to draw a card, so it's two to lock down a creature and draw a card, that's not bad. Wingfold Terran. Terran. Wingfold Terran enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or a hexproof counter. I really like the fact that it's flying counters, hexproof counter, because um, there are cards, especially in the like green and blue, that can move counters, specifically just counters. And I think that's very interesting because you can end up with like a, a Voltron deck, I guess, um, out of almost any deck as long as you can move a counter or two. That's that's pretty cool. And then two for a three-one cat. That's pretty on par for white. It's a pretty cool cat though. I gotta give it to him. Uh, not bad. And the uh, six cost for this three-six isn't the best, but being able to move that counter onto somebody else actually is pretty cool for a common. Not not being able to move it on itself, but in other decks. Let's see what we've got here. For uncommon, beginning of your upkeep, draw a card. If you control a creature card, the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield. Otherwise, put a woman counter a creature. That's pretty cool. So either it rewards you for not having a bigger creature on the field, or it rewards you for having the biggest creature on the field. That's a pretty cool enchantment, and it's only three. That's pretty cool uncommon. Let's see what I got here. Yeah. Whoa. Land, Island, Mountain, Plains. Ragrange Triome enters the battlefield tapped. Three for a cycling. What? And it's red, blue, white. That is a cool land. I really like that. I think that's really neat. And it says Island, Mountain, Plains. I think that's cool too. Alright. Springjaw Trap, a flash, we can just throw it down for one, pay four and tap it, sacrifice it, it deals three damage to any target. So, five altogether for three damage, I mean, it's not the greatest, but there are ways to get that cost down. So, that, that's actually pretty neat. I like the fact that it has flash. Um, let's see what we got here. Perimeter Sergeant, when it attacks other humans you control, get plus one, plus zero, okay. Adaptive Shimmer for 5. It's an insect, colorless insect creature. Adaptive Shimmer enters the battlefield with 3 1 1 counters on it. Huh. I bet you that could be very, very useful. That's almost bringing back, um. Oh, uh, the spike insects from a while ago. It would always enter with counters and you could move counters around. That's pretty neat. Rumbling Rock Slot, a damn target creature with the number of lands you control. That's pretty cool, especially late game. I mean, turn 4 4 damage is still awesome for a red deck. A 2 4 Vigilant, Muscoat Goriak for 3. Um, 2 and a green. I mean, it's not the best creature, but for 3, it's 2 4 Vigilance. It's actually it's pretty good. Ooh, a new Elemental. It enters the battlefield with X and 1 counters on its X and green. That is in. Insane. I have a blue green deck. I call it the blowout deck. And it's all about generating like 150 mana on turn 5. This card would be insane. Just flat out insane. And that's, that's going probably in that deck. Let's see what our new one is. Ooh, Skycat Sovereign. Elemental Cat. A lot of elementals. 
So I cast Starving, it's plus one, plus one for each other creature you control with flying. That's pretty cool. And for f four mana, you can create a white cat bird creature token with fly. I like the cat bird. I really like the mutate mechanic and how they're adding that in with the creatures and stuff. I think that's pretty cool. Alright. Oh, another insect. Return durable coil book from the grave into your hand for five. I mean, it's good if you have a lot of spare mana during a sack outlet, I guess. Deadweight. Okay. Myers Grass, but cheaper. Facet Reader for two. Pay one to have it. Draw a card and discard a card. It's not too bad. Kind of helps you cycle through your deck, get what you need, fix a few things, but it's not my favorite card. Dump the cards of your library between them to your hand, the other into your graveyard, and deals two damage to you. Alright, that's not bad for a, for a black deck. Especially if you're running like demons or something, you really need the, those extra cards in your hand. You don't mind the damage coming at you. It's not a bad fixer. Oh wow. Sudden spinnerets for one green. Creature gets one three inch on a turn, which is okay. I mean you expect that for one green, but then a reach counter. Now I'm not sure how these new counters are gonna work, but I'm pretty sure they're just gonna work with like any other counter, so a reach counter would or counter would just be like a one one counter, it stays. So you're just giving a creature reach forever as long as it stays on the field. And the the one three inch turn is awesome for defending against a flyer, but that that's actually that's, that's cool a reach counter, that's neat. Polywog symbiote symbiote. Each creature you, spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Okay, that's not bad. Maybe you cast a creature spell if it has mutate. Draw a card, then discard a card. Hmm. All right. Not a bad card, especially with this new mutate mechanic. I think that's pretty fun. Life link three three. Cycling for two. And when you cycle him, let's see, you put a lifelink counter on target creature you control. Now that, that is cool. That is worth just having it in your deck to cycle it just to give a lifelink to something. That is a neat card. Wow, way to bring white back into the into the fight competitively. Ooh, whoa. Emergent ultimatum. Seven cost, two black, two blue, and three green. Switch your library for three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. The opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle that card into your library, you may cast the other cards without paying their mana cost. Whoa. Whoa. That is. Wow. That is cool. I don't usually use black and green, but I um, think I might, just based around that sorcery card. See if there's more of that type of shenanigans in here. Let's see. Suffocating fumes. Creatures your opponents control get negative one, negative one. That's really good for getting rid of, like, if somebody's making a bunch of tokens uh, before they bump them uh, or buff them. If they don't buff them, you can get, get rid of them. If they do buff them, it brings them back down a peg, which is pretty cool. Um, another one of those. Let's see. Flycatcher. Giraffid. Is that a chameleon? <laughs> Elk. Antelope Blizzard. Okay. Okay. Flycatcher Giraffe it enters the battlefield with your choice of a Vigilance counter or a Reach counter on it. That's pretty cool. Vine Arrow for two. Four damage target attacking your blocking creature. Now that's a nice card, but that's more of the same. I think we've seen cards like a lot of cards like that from White. Uh, Cavern Whisperer. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, each opponent discards a card. Now, if it wasn't for the mutate mechanic. I would say we've seen this design in this card before. It looks very familiar to me, but I do like whenever this creature mutates, each opponent discards a card. That's pretty cool, and it has menace, so you can always mutate menace onto a nice creature. And of Crystal, okay, is another mana crystal, but it taps for three, but I like these tri mana dorks and tri mana rocks. I think those are really cool. Fight as one. Target human can choose plus one plus one. Gains indestructible end of turn. Target non human can choose plus one. And you can choose both. Oh, that's cool for one. For one, that's that's awesome. I think we're gonna see a lot of those kicking around in any white deck. 
The cycling ability of another non-linked card would cause you to draw a card instead. Exile cards on top of your library into you exile a card that shares a card type with the cycle card. You may cast that card without paying its mana cost and put the exile cards that weren't cast on the bottom of your library anywhere. What? Same card type. Wow. I mean, for a red burn, that's... That's amazing if you're looking for the specific creature or the specific enchantment or something and you have cycling on it. Wow. I mean, it, it itself has cycling too. I think that's pretty cool. Neat card. I'm not a big red player, but red blue artifacts I think are cool. But... Another mythic. Let's see. Nice swag commando. When it enters the battlefield, if you attack this turn, I get a 1 1 white human soldier creature. Alright, not bad. Tire creature plus 1 plus 0. Put a first strike counter on it. See, I really like these counters. I think that's going to be something really cool going forward in the meta and in the world of magic. Unexpected fangs, 1 1 counter, and lifelink counter. Wow. For 2 in black. That is amazing. It's going to be running a lot of vampire decks, a lot of life gain decks. That's pretty cool. You know the suffocating fumes? Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. It's like a bat bird raptor thing chasing down a kangaroo rat boar? Huh. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor deals damage to target creature or planeswalker. You pull in over instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. Creature or planeswalker would die this turn. Exile and set. That's going to be going in a lot of red, blue shock and burn decks. I think that's we're gonna see a lot of that. Flame shields four damage excess damage of the creature's controller instead. That's kinda cool and instant with trample. Ruinous ultimatum. Wow. Wow. That is a board wipe. That is a nice board you just we haven't seen a lot of board wipes lately, but red, white and black and it has a board which for all non land all non land permanents. That's all creatures, enchantments, artifacts, and it's only your opponents, so the 7 cost is worth it, because by turn 7, if you're not winning, your opponent's got a board, and if you don't have lethal on the board, you're going to need some room to breathe, and it's opponents, so for 4-player games, if they ever get that out, uh, I definitely will be ordering singles for this in real life, because this is an amazing card. I really like it. It's, it's a really nice Wrath of God, but for everything. That is cool. Red, white, and black deck, I think, is the next deck I might make. Alright. Flash, that's always nice for four. When Capture Sphere enters the battlefield, tap between a creature, doesn't attack and controls and tap step. That's cool, so it's just gonna lock down a creature for a while with that enchantment. A pretty high cost for that ability, but it's forever, so it's not bad. Pyroceratops, elemental dinosaur, another elemental. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, he gets a 1-1 counter. That's pretty cool. Then we're going to see a lot of that in burn decks, too, just because it's a creature that's just going to get huge because of your spell cards. Oh, okay. Honey Mammoth. All right. So, like a Triceratops Bear Mammoth. And here's the battlefield. You gain 4 life. It's 6 for a 6-6, six, six, so I think that's right on par. And plus, you gain 4 life, so I think that's pretty neat. Good, uh, good beefy card for green-white decks, or just mono-green, really. Ooh, a Vigilant Cycling 1, which is nice if you get it in the beginning of you know, your first hand. You really need, just need to get that out of your hand for one and get rid of it. That's not bad. But with this Mutate mechanic, you could give Vigilance or something or have a 3-6 with a bunch of other bonuses. So I think it's pretty cool. Oh, wow. Barrier Breach. Except the three target enchantments. It's nice to see some enchantment hate, especially coming out of Theros Beyond Death, because that just was flooded with enchantments, and this finally has some enchant good enchantment hate. For three, that's not bad, but two for cycling. Oh, wow. For one, for a one one, and whenever it mutates, creature opponent throws negative two, negative two, until on turn. That's actually pretty neat, especially for one. That's a pretty cool one. Oh, perfect. I was actually just talking about this um, the other day. Uh, when you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced. So it's great for mana ramp. And then you look at the top five cards of your library, and uh, for five, you may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. The rest on the bottom of your library and more. I think this is going to be a great, great commander, I think. 
um, as far as blue green commanders go uh, for this new series, this new set. I think Kinnan is um, definitely going to be the number one. Uh, blue and green uh, commander, but maybe maybe I'll be proved wrong, but I believe that's what we're going to end up seeing. Alright, starting to get some more of the same now. Humble Naturalist, add one mana of any color, spend this mana only to cast creatures, so that's not bad. Like I was saying, that blue-green ramp, that would give him two mana, so that's not bad, and it's any color, so you can always get double the color. Convert a mana cost two or less for two. Not bad, easy prey. We've seen a lot of that. Heartless Act, destroy target creature with no counters on it. That's important in this because this set has a lot of giving just random weird counters, and it allows you to remove it with three counters from a creature. So that's your that's your uh, your your indestructible counter. That's your death touch counter. That's your life link counter. That you know that, that's that's pretty powerful for two. Uh, Cloud Piercer, mutate whenever it mutates. We discard a card if you drop a card. It's a 5-4 reach 5, that's not bad, just alone. You mutate it for 4 and give something reach, or make it a 5-4 with something, you know, another ability. I think this mutate is going to be fun. Oh, a wild card from Mythic Rare, that'll be nice. Alright, we've got Cathartic Reunion. You discard 2 cards to draw 3, that's that's pretty good for 2 on uh, in red, that's pretty good for card draw. Okay, uh, 1-1 one, one red two. Okay, so that's... More <laughs> 1 1 humans from white. That's, you know, what we've seen throughout the years. Uh, ooh, wow. That is a neat enchantment. I really, really like that enchantment. Blue has a lot of card draw. You could easily draw 8 cards, maybe in a single turn, right after putting this out. And just give yourself an 8 8 blue cracking creature token. That's pretty neat. Ooh, Dirge Bat. It's a mutate flash flying. Whenever it mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker on opponent. Wow. Does mutate for six, four and two black, which is a little costly. But it's got flash, so you can do it on your opponent's turn, right after they put a creature down. Whap, gone. Right after they put their planeswalker down, before they can even activate it. Whap, gone. I think that's. That's pretty neat. We just got some some new stuff here. What do we got? Tentative connection. Dress the cat to control a creature with menace. All right, some black red usually. Um, gain control to target creature until end of turn. Trap that creature against a steal. Okay, okay. So for one, if you have a menace creature, you can steal something. Not bad. Blazing volley for one red, one damage each creature your opponent's control. We've seen this before. Convolute. We've seen that. That's cool. Spontaneous flight for three. It gets a quick bonus for the turn and a flying counter. That's a great, great white instant. Wow. Clash of Titans. Okay. You don't see this often. I believe we've seen it before, but not often where red just has a creature fight another creature. That's usually a green thing. Mythos of Vadrock. Mythos of Vadrock. Deals 5 damage to fighters who choose among any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. If white and blue was spent to cast this spell until your next turn, those permanents can't attack or block and their activities can be activated. Wow, so you can either lock down 5 creatures or just blow something away for 4 mana. That's, that's a pretty nice sorcery, I gotta say. Red's kinda growing on me. Okay, 4-2 for 3? That's pretty awesome, especially if you have a Godzilla deck. Is this, for all intents and purposes, it's a 4-4. You'll see when we, if we run across a Godzilla. Vulpikeet. Like a Parakeet. Vulpix, I guess? It's Fox. Foxbird. Whenever this creature mutates, put a 1-1 counter on it. Not bad. Give something flying and a 1-1 counter. Raking Claws. Gains Double Strike. That's really awesome for two. A new Plummet. I like the art on that Plummet. Insatiable Hemophage. Death Touch with Mutate. It mutates. Each opponent loses X life. You X the number of times this creature has mutated. What? 
So you just keep mutating it and mutating it and mutating it. And just giving new things death touch or giving it new abilities. Cool. That's really cool. Storm Wild Caprador. A 1-3 for 3 flying. Non-combat damage would be dealt to him. Prevent that damage and put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each 1 damage rendered this way. What? So do you just spark yourself? And <laughs> just make him huge? That's pretty cool. Ooh. Cub Warden. Like, a lion... Ox? Says it's a cat, but it doesn't look like a cat. Lifelink for 4, so 3-5. Mutate for 4. Whenever a creature mutates, create two one one white cracker so there's a lifelink. It's, it's gonna be beautiful in a Johnny deck, let me tell you. Right. Oh, only three new things here. Wilt, strike target artifact or enchantment. Okay, so naturalized, but it has cycling, which is pretty cool. Fire prophecy. Three damage target creature. You may put a card from your hand on the bottom of your library if you do draw a card. Not bad if you're trying to get rid of a you know, a high cost card early game, you just you need to draw something else so you can get your engine rolling, that's pretty cool. Ooh, and a unicorn. Majestic Oricorn. Four and oh, I mean it's not a unicorn, it actually has a lot of horns. But anyway. For five, it's vigilance and it's mutate. And when it mutates again for that's again, not bad. Why I'm really liking really liking white now. Death Oasis for white, black, green. It's Less than pretty much cost increase the attachment. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. Whenever a non token creature mold dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, and then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. That's a neat recursion way to just keep getting back those those dirty black cards, or maybe the, the white ones that have uh, like afterlife and stuff like that. It's very dirty combinations here. I'm a combo player, so I really enjoy seeing all these mutate things and different combo abilities. I heard a lot about this being um, commander heavy and commander almost only series, but I'm not seeing it. I really like what I see here for constructed standard. Four flash when it. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target creature that was dealt damage this turn. Beautiful, beautiful human assassin. Farfinder, uh, for three, it uh, looks colorless, one, one, vigilance. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a basic land card, put it in your hand. Okay, okay, so kind of mana fixing, I guess. Flourishing Fox, so that's pretty. For one white, when you recycle another card, he gets a one, one counter. Wow, we've seen plenty of cycle in this set, so that's, that's pretty useful. Ooh, Mori the Collector. Legendary creature ooze. Two and green, two green or black, or any combination of the two. Companion, each non land card in your starting deck shares a card. Okay, so this is the new thing, Companion. I've been wondering about this. Um, it allows you to cast it from outside the game, so does that make it like an extra commander card? Or does that make it like. Every deck you put this in has a command. I know they have things like companion. each non land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So I can only have only creatures, I guess, in in my starting deck, or only spells. And then he enters the battlefield and chooses a card type. And spells be cast with a chosen type costs one less to cast. So that's pretty neat. I like it, but it's not something that like I like the imagery, I like the, the ability, but it's just not my play style. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of it, people are going to find a way to break the game with it, but uh, it's just not me. Oh, okay, okay, we've got some blue finally. Thieving Otter, that's pretty. Deals damage to an opponent, I draw a card. Not bad, especially this new mutate mechanic. Um, let's see, Garrison Cat. I'm going to die, it's a 1 1 white human soldier. Okay, so more white. Helica Glider. When enters the battlefield, my choice of a flying counter or first strike counter. That's cool. Ooh, wow. Titanoth Rex. Trample 11 11 for 9. Cycling for 1 in the green. When I cycle him, I put trample counter target. So I can give a creature trample or just drop this massive beast. That is beautiful. Boon of the Wish Giver. Draw 4 cards. Alright, not bad. Cycling for 1. It's a pretty cheap cycle cost. 
There's another. Right. I'm getting down to the last ones. A new type of evolving wild, or artwork for the least. Mutual destruction. Has flash as long as you control permanent with flash. That's actually pretty cool. So it's like a one cause bone splinters. Okay. Six with a five five haste elemental serpent lava serpent. That's cool. That's neat. Zagoth crystal. I like again these three color mono rocks. I think are pretty cool. And the majestic unicorn. Bonders conclave or enclave. Tap for a colorless or draw a card. That's pretty cool. I mean. I mean Power 4 or greater, this is a Corya, you're gonna have a creature power 4 or greater. I believe we've seen Bristling Bull before, I think that's just a reprint. Forbidden Friendship, 1 1 Red Dinosaur creature token with haste, and 1 1 White Soldier human creature token. That's pretty cool, I like that. That just makes me smile, that's cool. Mutate, it's a 4 4 for 4. Whenever this creature mutates, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Cool. So you can mutate out your 4-4 with a cool ability and Grave Digger, essentially. That's pretty cool. Void Beckoner. Death Touch Cycling. 8-8 eight, eight, for 8. And when you cycle him, you put a Death Touch counter on target creature you control. I mean, that's pretty cool. But the 8-8 eight, eight Death Touch for 8 is also awesome. But that's just me. Gigantha the Wellspring for 5, red or green, legendary elemental elk I'm assuming. Companion, no cards in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol and its mana cost. Add Wooberg, this mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost. That's really cool. That's something I might build around. That is neat. Oh, a new Frost Lynx. I do like the design. It is pretty. Another fighting card from Red. It's pretty cool. See, I don't like this one. Maybe it's because I've been spoiled and a little jaded on the other ones giving counters, and this one just says indestructible to end of turn, but it is what it is. Sonorous Howl Bonder. For three, block or red. Menace is nice. Each creature you control with menace can't be blocked except by three or more creatures. Wow. Wow. That is pretty cool. That I can see that getting abused. Turn target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do it, fights one creature you don't control. That's cool. But it goes, it's a choreo. It's green. We've seen a lot of green cards be massive. That's... We've seen 8-8 eight, eight death touches that you could put on the field and have it fight something. That's that's awesome. Oh, look at that, man. New Planeswalker. Luca Copper Coat Outcast. I think... we I looked at this earlier, I think. Earlier in the week. Oh, wow. So... This thing's negative two ability allows you to exile a target creature card you control, then reveal cards off the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. You put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. The most important part is a higher converted mana cost. And it's creature. It's not just a permanent. It's not, uh, I believe it's breeding pool that does that. It, it, it's not, it, it's specific creature. That is cool. I think any red decks I make are gonna have Luka in it. That is an awesome, awesome card. I don't even care about his negative seven. Between his plus one and his negative two, this is an amazing planeswalker. Boot Nipper. For one in the black, he's a two one. His battlefield choice, death touch counter, a lifelink counter. See that I like that. For two. We recycle another card. This does one damage to each opponent. See, that's awesome. With all the cycle in this set, you're trying to fix yourself anyway, and you get to do an extra damage for it. Why not? Frostvale Ambush. 
tap into two target creatures. Those creatures don't attack, and control controls next and tap step. Five, ah, uh, you don't really like it. I wouldn't put this in many decks. The cycling is nice when you have other cards like this that give you the one damage to cycle, but it's not something I expect to see in a lot of decks. Charge of the Forever Beast. Additional cost to cast this spell, reveal a creature card from your hand. Charge of the Forever Beast deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the creature's reveal to the revealed card's power. Again, these 8-8s and 11-11s we've been seeing for 3, you can do 11 damage to something if it's in your hand. That's a pretty nice card. I think we're going to see a lot of that. Especially in like a more aggressive decks or a green, uh, red burn decks and stuff like that. Well, this is nice. Legendary creature, dinosaur hippo, is a companion. Starting deck contains only cards with converted monocost of 3 or greater and land cards. I literally make decks like this all the time. Uh, when he enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control for the monocost three or greater. That, that is awesome. You're gonna see a lot of that from me. All right, let's see the final pack. Hopefully we get Godzilla. If not, I'm just gonna go buy him with my wild cards. All right, a lot of the same. Got a one in a green, one in a white rather for a two-two human cleric. Whenever you cycle another card, you gain one life. Red and white. Do one damage, gain one life. A lot of these cards have one pay for cycling, so one to gain one and do one. That's not a bad combination, actually. Auspicious Sterix, Elk Beast. Mutate for six. It costs five to play. It's a six six. Whenever you mutate, you exile cards off the top of your library into exile X permanent, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated, and you put those cards onto the battlefield. That is broken. If you can generate enough mana and keep mutating. Wow. You can get stupid in Nicoria. I'm we're gonna see massive drag out fist fight battles or games that have that are over in two turns. <laughs> this is insane. I really like this set. Ooh. Song of Creation. One green, blue, and red. I play an additional land on each of my turns. Whenever I cast a spell I draw two cards. Ooh, but at the beginning of my end step, I discard my hand. I mean, it's great for top decking. Really allows you to keep running through your cards, but man. It's going to be a great enchantment in some commander decks, I'm sure. Uh, even some standard. But, wow. That is a neat card. That plus Damia Sage of Stone could be pretty scary. Maybe a four-color deck, but still. All right, there you have it. There's some of the new cards from Akoria, Layer of Behemoths. I think they're pretty awesome, and I think I'll be um, building a deck around it. In the next video I put up will probably be us drafting in the new set, seeing what we can do. Uh, if you liked it, drop a like. Uh, go ahead and subscribe so I can start getting a subscriber base. That'll really motivate me to start making better videos and putting out more content. And uh, if you have any ideas for other videos or any decks you want to see me build or any tribals you want to see me work around, let me know and I'll get to it.